The coronavirus is surging across the country in my state and many others as well. I think I can safely say that I and most of my members believe that another package is important. We've been trying to pass something that we think is targeted directly at the greatest need literally for months. I put a package on the floor a month ago that every Republican but one voted for, and all the Democrats voted against, a package that I think would enjoy unanimous support on both sides, except that the Democratic argument appears to continue to be, if we can't have everything we want, we won't allow anything to pass. My members think that we need to try to address this again. We'll vote on the popular PPP loan program today and the larger $500 billion package uh, tomorrow. I don't anticipate that we'll get any Democratic votes, but we wanted to make the point to the American people that Senate Republicans believe another package is important, and we've crafted one that we think includes things that are not controversial. I'm aware that uh, discussions continue between the President and the Speaker about a larger package. Um, obviously, if that were to come over, uh, we'd have to consider it and would consider it. With regard to the Supreme Court Justice, as I think you've already written, we'll be voting to confirm Justice to be uh, Barrett uh, next Monday. And I think that will be <clears throat> another signature accomplishment in our effort to put on the courts, the federal courts, men and women who believe in the quaint notion that maybe the job of the judge is to actually follow the law. Well, as the leader pointed out, um, we will have a vote, an opportunity this afternoon uh, to vote on coronavirus relief legislation that is targeted, that is fiscally responsible that addresses all the issues that uh, both Democrats and Republicans have said they want to have addressed, whether it's unemployment insurance, um, loans for small businesses through the PPP program, funding so that schools can open safely, uh, additional funding for uh, health care and actually beating this crisis, which means funding for testing and therapeutics and vaccines, all things on which there's bipartisan agreement. Uh, we're going to have that vote again. Um, that's where Republicans are coming from. That's where we've been coming from since the very beginning on this. What the Democrats are advocating as an all or nothing approach that holds coronavirus relief hostage to a bunch of left wing demands. And essentially what they're saying is if you don't, if you don't move over here and give us everything we want, there's no deal. And so what essentially they're saying to the American people is if you don't give us two point four trillion dollars, which is what their demand currently is, that's the, the most recent CBO score, then you're going to end up with zero point zero dollars. That's basically the Democrat position. It's an all or nothing approach. Uh, and again, we are going to continue to advocate for policies that are targeted, that are fiscally responsible, and that deliver the assistance to the American people where it's really needed. Um, to the point about the, the Supreme Court, uh, she is a wonderful nominee. I think everybody got an opportunity to see that last week. Uh, she acquitted herself extremely well in front of the committee. I was proud of all our uh, Judiciary Committee members, the way they handled that hearing. Uh, I think it was great. In fact, even the uh, ranking Democrat, Senator Feinstein, on the committee indicated that she thought it was, she was very impressed with the nominee and thought that the, uh, that the hearing was conducted in a, in a very fair and balanced way. And I. I agree with her on that point. I think she's absolutely right. Uh, this is a terrific nominee. As the leader pointed out, we're on a schedule now to confirm her early next week, and uh, we intend to do that because uh, I think we all believe uh, on the Republican side that we want judges on the justices on the Supreme Court who are there to apply, interpret the law and the Constitution in an impartial way, to call balls and strikes, not to rewrite the rules of the game. She is a constitutionalist. She made that very clear. And, and that's what we want to see on the Supreme Court and in all the federal courts. Well, Republicans are ready to vote for urgently needed relief for the American public, and uh, the bill that we're going to be taking a look at is $500 billion, a very significant amount of money. 
aimed at patients, uh, aimed at workers, and aimed at school children. I mean, that's where the needs truly are. If you take a look at this, it's a second round of paycheck protection for small businesses. It's a hundred billion dollars for our children to be back in school safely. It's unemployment benefits for people who, for no fault of their own, are out of work. It's money for vaccines, additional money to develop vaccines and then to distribute those vaccines. That's what the American people need. So there was an urgency and the need to act is now. If Nancy Pelosi were actually serious about doing relief for the American people, she would tell her deputy Chuck Schumer to get on the bill that we're bringing to the floor today. If Nancy Pelosi were actually serious, she would eliminate all the things in her legislation that have nothing to do with coronavirus, and she would eliminate the poison pills. Now, if Nancy Pelosi were really serious, she'd call back this do-nothing Democrat House of Representatives to Congress to work with us on finding solutions for the American people. But Nancy Pelosi isn't serious. That's because she doesn't want anything to pass. She and Chuck Schumer have made a calculated decision, it's a political decision, that nothing is going to pass until after Election Day because they believe that they have better chances of success on Election Day if the American people are held hostage all the way through then. The American people need to see clearly what is happening, and I know certainly in Wyoming they do see clearly what is happening. And we're going to vote, and the Democrats are going to vote today and tomorrow against something, and then they're going to say they're for it. Let us be clear. The Democrats are acting out of selfish political reasons, not because they're trying to help the people that they claim that they represent. Well, the, the speaker knows how to get things done if she wants to get things done. And she also knows the way to get things done is not to say, I, give me everything I want or I don't want anything. And not just the money, but the policy. This has not just been a debate about the money, which is well beyond the money we need to do the job that needs to be done. But it's also not just about spending the amount of money they want to spend, uh, but more and more it's about spending it exactly the way they want to spend it. Uh, that will not produce a result. Uh, I think it's incredibly unfortunate, as uh, Senator Barrasso just said, there's money in our package for, for to complete the incredible effort we're making on vaccines, uh, the incredible effort we're making on testing, to be sure that both vaccines and tests have the money necessary to get distributed and widely used. And that shouldn't wait till the middle of December or the middle of January or the middle of February. Uh, that needs to happen right now. But it's not the way to legislate. Nobody knows that better uh, than the speaker. It is not the way to reach a conclusion. It's the best way you can almost assure you're not going to reach an a conclusion, which is to say, give me everything I want or I don't want anything. The Paycheck Protection Program was one of the most popular, bipartisan supported programs in our CARES package or the COVID-19 relief package. And I am very excited that we will have the opportunity to vote on the Paycheck Protection Program once again and allow a second pass for those small businesses that have been hit the hardest. In Iowa, over 61,000 small businesses benefited from the Paycheck Protection Program. So I am very hopeful that we can come together on the floor of this Senate and that Democrats will join us again in one of the most bipartisan programs available during COVID-19. We really need to make sure our small businesses are supported and that our moms and dads have opportunity to remain employed and then to go back to work. Now, moving on to Judge Amy Coney Barrett, I had the wonderful opportunity to sit through the judiciary hearings this past week, and Judge Barrett is very poised, even when she was being interrupted and um, really pushed around by our Senate Democrat colleagues. Uh, they wouldn't allow her to answer the questions. They kept interrupting. But through all of that, she just held herself with an extraordinary level of grace and poise. And not only that, 
Bottom line, she's an exceptional jurist. She's been highly commended by liberals and conservatives in academia and all across the board. So we are very excited about the opportunity to put on the Supreme Court another justice who will uphold and defend our Constitution. And bottom line, that's what Iowans are looking for someone who will defend our Constitution. And so this Thursday, when it is brought up for a vote, I look forward to casting my support in favor of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to be our next Supreme Court Justice. Well, evidently, uh, Speaker Pelosi and National Democrats believe that uh, giving the American people during a time of great need nothing is better than giving them something. I think she misreads uh, the opinion of the American people as she makes that judgment, uh, but we here in the Republican-controlled Senate will once again uh, take a stab this week at providing much-needed targeted relief uh, to the American people. We'll provide them relief so that uh, their health care can be assured during this time. We'll provide them relief so that they can safely return to work and to school. Um, I'm hopeful uh, that uh, we might get some bipartisan assistance this go-round, but uh, not particularly optimistic. In the meanwhile, we will continue discussions. We will continue to see if negotiations might lead to a broader breakthrough when it comes to a package, and it's my hope that that can happen, but uh, I am not optimistic. Uh, once again, Nancy Pelosi seems to prefer nothing over something during a time of uh, Americans' greatest need. On the positive front, uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, just had an outstanding hearing last week, and the American people were able to get a front row seat as, as they watched Amy Coney Barrett from the great state of Indiana uh, demonstrate her knowledge of the law, demonstrate that she certainly has command of the facts of particular cases, uh, that her means of jurisprudence is infused with great integrity. She is someone who doesn't intend to legislate from the bench, but instead to uh, apply the law of the land to the facts of a given case. And along the way, the American people increasingly became supportive of her nomination, and they support confirmation before the election. So uh, I very much look forward to voting as, as we turn towards Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation vote, to uh, voting in support of Amy Coney Barrett. And uh, I think we will find that uh, this is one Hoosier for years to come who will be serving this country with great honor and distinction. contain another round of stimulus checks for all Americans? No, it, it doesn't. Um, but it does address an awful lot of things that we do agree on. And I don't think the fact that those checks are not a part of this package, as others have said, is a good argument for not doing what we are laying on the floor, most of which is completely without controversy. Why did you decide not to include another round of stimulus checks? We thought about $500 billion was appropriate for at this juncture. Uh, no one would argue the economy is in good shape, but it's noteworthy that it, unemployment is about 8.4 percent, which is what it was in several years during the Obama first term. We clearly have way too many people unemployed, and we do continue the plus up of unemployment insurance. <laughs> clarify something you said earlier first. You said that if Pelosi and Mnuchin do reach an agreement that you will consider the legislation, does that mean bringing it to the floor? Well, it, yeah. If, if, a, okay. if a presidentially supported bill clears the House, at some point we'll bring it to the floor, yes. And has, has the President asked you to move forward on that or to support it and to get your members to support it? We'd have to see what it was first. Uh, there's, there's been no deal announced. If a deal is announced, then it'll have to be written. Then people will have a chance to take a look at it. Then it'll have to clear the House. And if all of that occurs, of course, we would consider it in the Senate. Are you personally, he's talking about a price tag of $1.8 trillion. He says he wants to go higher than $2.2 .2 trillion. Are you personally, Senator, comfortable with spending that amount of money? Well, what I'm 
telling you is that if such a deal were to clear the House, obviously with the presidential signature promised, we would put it on the floor of the Senate and let the Senate consider it. Do you have any reaction to the tremendous amounts of money that are flowing in to some of these Senate races on behalf of Democratic candidates? Some of your GOP colleagues say that maybe campaign finance rules need to be reviewed. Do you have any reaction to that? Well, let me uh, give a shout out to the Democrats. Um, the, the, the lion's share of the money that's flooding into campaigns is coming from small donors. Uh, I give an example in my own campaign. I've got over 700,000 donors, and the average contribution is about 35 bucks. I don't think any kind of campaign finance reform designed at producing fewer people interested is a good idea. And as you know, I've been in the forefront for 25 years of fending off efforts by the government to restrict campaign contributions because it is the only way normal citizens get to participate other than voting. I guess the point, though, is that do, uh, contributions that are $200, you don't know where they're coming from. They don't have to be disclosed. Uh, well, because they're below 200 bucks. Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody giving less than 200 bucks would be somebody trying to buy influence. Senator McConnell, is it appropriate for the president to continue attacking Dr. Fauci in the way that he has recently? Well, one thing they both agree on is that shutting down the economy again is not a good idea. And as you guys have heard me say repeatedly since the 1st of May, the one thing we all need to do is wear our mask, practice social distancing, try to prevent the spread. It's clear that we're having a second round of surge. And the only thing each of us can do until we get a vaccine is to act as responsibly as possible. That's what I and my members are doing. That's why the Senate's been in session since the 1st of May. Thanks. Do you have confidence in Dr. Fauci?